We knew that we were in a very tricky situation because people were very, very mad about living with carnivores. I was very close to declare the Andean bear extinct. The Inter-Andean dry forest is one of the most neglected ecosystems in the entire region. It's extremely fragmented and it's extremely fragile. And at the same time, it's home of an astonishing number of species. The Andean bear, it's called the gardener of the Andes. The bear and other seed dispersers is helping the forest to regenerate naturally. Anything that the bear eats, especially fruits, the seeds that the bear is moving from one tree to the other, it's helping to disperse through the forest. At a global scale, um, the Andean bear, it's, um, the population is declining. The IUCN for list assessed the Andean bear as a vulnerable species. Bolivia, the latest assessment of bear population was 3,000 adults. I was very close to declare the Andean bear extinct from the inter-Andean dry forest. The main problem is habitat loss. They really need large areas to move and find food and find their resources. The second main threat is climate change. We are seeing really long dry season and that affects on the production of fruits from this forest and it's very likely that the cubs will, won't survive. And the third threat is the illegal hunting for bear parts, for bear trade and human bear conflict. Um, so people um, kill the bears as uh, retaliatory um, actions for um, cattle. During the past probably 10 years, the number of um, losses uh, caused by climate change has increased dramatically. People are losing their crops completely. So people started investing in cattle. And of course, bears are carnivores. And if there's any you know, available protein, they're going to get it. So bears are extremely smart. So they know when a female is going to give birth. So they start to follow the, the, the cow. And as soon as she's starting labor and she's starting to give birth, then the bear goes and attacked. So it's a double kill. It kills the mother and it kills the calf. And that's how the conflict starts. A bear kills the calf and then people go there and they get really, really mad and they just, you know, go and kill the bear. So we still have a problem with illegal hunting. Uh, for example, uh, last year, it was one of the first individuals that we identified. It was the dominant male that we put a name, SL1M, Slim. You could read it as Slim. But it wasn't slim at all. It was a big, chubby, beautiful male. And we've been monitoring these individuals since 2017. Last year, we got a call from the field um, telling us that uh, our bear was killed. We asked everyone around. And yeah, they confirmed that they, that they killed the bear. This family, they went to the field. They knew where were the bears and they killed it. They killed it and they took the skin out from the bear. And yeah, that of course was extremely sad for the entire team, but the show must go on. We knew that we were in a very tricky situation because people were very, very mad about living with carnivores. The main words that I used to describe a bear was killer and bad. Those words are related to extremely bad attitudes, really low tolerance toward bears. The communities that we were working with, uh, they were extremely poor. For someone who has lost almost everything through, you know, uh, because of hail or because of drought, 
they have to do whatever it is possible to feed their families. That's why we are so interested to working with these communities, because we are seeing an opportunity to help them at the same time, help the bears and all the biodiversity um, from the dry forests. In one of our communities, we wanted to start a beekeeping project. So we started with one community that agreed to start with us, working with us. And suddenly we were working with five communities. So a bear dispersed the seeds. Those seeds, at some point, will need a pollinator. Our bees, they get the nectar, they get the pollen, and then they bring all of that benefit from the forest to the beehive and they produce the honey. They collect that little gift from the bear and transform in a honey pot. And we are recovering the forest little by little. So our project now is protecting the ecosystem, protecting the inter andean dry forest and all the little bits and pieces and all the elements that it's inside that amazing and beautiful and neglected ecosystem.